law overview. Thank you. So far, Public Workers Act is also in a state statute. This one's 119. As well as the Florida Constitution, it provides a right of access to state and local government records, as well as records of private entities acting on their behalf. I'll digress a little bit. That's been the subject of a lot of litigation in the last two to three years. That's a relatively, even though that concept has been around for a long time, the legislature changed the law a little bit and made it a little more publicized. And so if you were a private entity that had a contract with the government and were performing a government function, which was always the key test, then those documents related to that private entity might become public as well. Um, and the only exceptions are those that are established uh, by statute or by the Constitution, such as exempt or confidential information, and we'll talk about those later, things like medical record or social security information. The Act provides for the right of inspection of all public records. Records, as you can see, are very broadly construed. It's documents, letters, photos, videos, audio, texts, text, and I'll emphasize text, emails, reports, other materials, and sometimes even draft documents, as we talked about before, the minutes would be a public record even before you officially approve them. But to be a public record, it must be made or received pursuant to law or ordinance or in connection with the transaction of official business and use to perpetuate, communicate, or formalize knowledge. A lot of words on the line there because if it's not done in pursuit of law or formalizing uh, transaction of business, it's not a public record. And just because a record may be found at City Hall or a city computer, it may not be a public record. So, for example, if I give Mike a birthday card, that's not a public record. And he keeps it in his drawer. And I gave it to him. You forgot this year. Yeah, no, I did forget this year. That's why I'm just a happy birthday, Mike. Uh, um, but that's not a public record. It has to have something to do with the transaction of official public records. Uh, an employee, for example, that uses their um, city computer to send, again, a personal email, happy birthday, that email is not a public record. The other side of that coin, though, if you're using a private computer, let's say you're at home using your personal computer, and you send out an email to, um, well, the city manager is an easy example, uh, saying, um, you know, on next week's agenda, I'd like to discuss ABC. Well, that email is now a public record. No matter where it came from, whether it came from your, your personal computer, your phone, whatever, if it's transacting or talking about city business, it's a public record. So we always try to recommend use your city equipment for city business. That way you don't have to worry about, you know, what may or may not be on your personal computers. Again, it provides a right of access to state and local government records. Oops, sorry, the back button. A request does not need to be in writing and background information on the request is not required. So I can walk in and say, I'd like a copy of uh, that piece of paper on your desk. And what's your name? You don't have to give a name. You have the right of access. Now, the city does use a form to facilitate the request because sometimes you not clear on what the request is, and it's optional. The requester does not need to use the form, but you want to make sure you're complying with the request, particularly if the request is voluminous or is asking for information that could be subject to interpretation. If you put it in writing, it's pretty clear, but there's no requirement. The law does not require to be put in writing. Um, and again, I'll digress a little bit on, on uh, a lot of lawsuits that occurred, and I know the legislature was considering passing a law, which I don't think they did pass, because there's a cottage industry that's grown up in, in the state where people have made numerous public records requests, usually with kind of funky email addresses, and a lot of people think it's spam, they delete it, you don't respond to the pub, and it's a, always a request for something innocuous, like, I want a copy of your insurance policy and it's not responded to. Five days later, there's a public records lawsuit. You call the other lawyer up and so, well, you know, you can pay us $5,000 to settle the case or we can litigate it. You know and I know that you violated the law and you know, my fees will be 20000 by the time we go to trial. And it, it's been a big cottage industry and it's been the subject of different efforts to reform that law more towards the private sector side because, again, that was happening with the private entities and, you know, they have a little more clout in Tallahassee, unfortunately, than local governments do, and so the, uh, the tilt has been to try and at least protect them somewhat, and that law didn't pass uh, this session. So as all of the city clerks know, you see a public records request, you got to take it seriously, uh, even if you think it's, it's some kind of spam. 
at the records custodian, uh, which includes really all city personnel who have control of the document, is res are responsible for responding to that request. Now, it's probably a lot easier and it makes more sense if people went to the clerk's office because, again, they do this for a living. They're very good at what they do. Uh, Debbie in the clerk's office here will always coordinate if there's records that are off from more than one department. Um, but again, technically a person could go to, you know, say William Waters and say, I want to see a copy of the zoning map. Okay? And William would have to provide it. The city's response time must be, oops, sorry, must be reasonable. And again, reasonable depends on what's the size of the request and the amount of time necessary to retrieve the record to redact information. Some requests, again, I want to see this piece of paper on the commissioner's desk right here. I want to see this page. Well, that's right there. How long does it take to go make a photocopy and, and give it back to the person? That could be minutes. However, you come in with a request that's 5,000 pages and located in seven different departments. That may be two weeks, three weeks. So it really <coughs> depends on what's being uh, requested. And we'll talk a minute about fees for, for uh, paying for that uh, document. If the records uh, contain exempt information, the city has to advise the requester that this is exempt and the reasons why, for example, social security numbers are protected, medical information is protected. And if uh, just because there's something exempt on the document doesn't mean you don't produce the documents. You still produce the document, but you have to redact or black out the uh, sensitive information. Some things the city is not required to do in response to requests. We do not need to recreate a record. If it doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. Um, you don't need to reformat records to respond to requests, and you don't need to answer questions. Again, it's not a question <coughs> answer, it's simply a record request. If the record exists, you provide it. If it doesn't, you don't create it. People talk about the Freedom of Information Act. That does not apply to cities. It's, that's a federal law, it applies to federal agencies, similar to the Sunshine Law, obviously, but people sometimes get them mixed up um, for the same basic purpose. And the city disposes of public records in accordance with this retention schedule. The, uh, the state, Department of State, puts out a schedule. Pam's eyes go bleary reading the schedule. And records are disposed of in accordance with the schedule. So many years for this type of record, so many years for that type of record. And if we believe it's exempt, you have to give the exemption uh, statute number. Uh, Newer exemptions uh, are subject to a five-year review repeal, so I think in the last 15 years, any new exemption has to be looked at every five years. And these are the common ones. I've already mentioned social security numbers, home addresses, telephone numbers of certain personnel, HR personnel, code enforcement, law enforcement, city manager, security systems, building records, attorney work product, medical information. Those are the common ones. There's hundreds of exemptions, but those are the most common. We have the sealed bids, proposals, uh, replies, receiving a response. Uh, that's, they're also exempt until the city provides notice of an intended decision or 30 days after the opening of the bids proposal of final replies. I think we just went through this you know, with the ITN process. When the final replies finally would come in, that's when the 30-day uh, period clicked <coughs> in, and then those documents became a public record. Also, if there's a rejection, uh, there's <coughs> provisions for how long those remain exempt. An exception is the sealed bids for construction. Um, when that occurs, those must be <coughs> open at a public meeting where the name of the bidder and the amount of the bidder disclosed immediately. Fees are in accordance with Florida statutes. Um, it's typically 15 cents per page, a certified copy is a dollar per page and other charges for the actual cost of duplication, for example, the cost of a DVD, a CD. And it's got to be your actual cost. You can't you know, go and have a CD that, or a DVD that costs you 20 cents and charge $20 for it. Uh, you can charge the cost of the CD, you can charge the cost of the staff time if it's an extensive request, but you're supposed to charge the actual cost that it costs you to provide it to the citizen. Because remember, all of this, and the way I used to do this years ago is, you know, the lights are paid for by the city taxpayers. The pens you're writing with are paid for by the taxpayers. The computers you're working on are paid for by the taxpayers. So everything is a public record because the taxpayers paid for it all and they have a right to, to see the business that you're conducting on their behalf. And that's kind of an easy way to remember um, where this all came from. 
then you have these special service charges. So again, since the public is paying the salary of employees, why should they have to pay more if somebody wants a 5,000 page request? Well, then that requester uh, has to pay the fee. So if it's more than an hour, the staff time will be calculated. You make $20 <coughs> an hour, and if it's going to take you two hours, that's $40. Um, and the extensive use of IT resources, for example, clerical assistance. Cities allow to ask for an advance deposit. So if this is going to be a big job and it's going to take you know, $500, you don't have to spend $500 in staff time copying it. The person says, oh, never mind, I don't need it anymore. No, you get the money up front. You're allowed to get uh, a, a reasonable deposit up front. Same thing as the Sunshine Law. Um, there are criminal and civil penalties both. Um, if the request was received by the city, the attorney's fees, that's always the kicker. The actual cost of the documents is usually minimal. It's the other side seeking attorney's fees that drives uh, a lot of litigation in this area. And there's criminal penalties. I don't remember a criminal case in the public records law. You see it more often than the Sunshine Law, but technically uh, that could be a criminal violation as well. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, do you know how many records? Debbie Andrea in your office is the records custodian. She's constantly busy. Do you know how many records she supplies a year on average? Supplies, no, but many individuals do request emails, and those can be uh, upward of a thousand to twenty or thirty thousand emails that she has to review. Uh, for any exempt information, so. So the great bulk of her time, though, is is complying with records. And we're very committed to obviously doing it. So oh, absolutely. We, She's you know, a certified her, records manager. She, so yes, we absolutely. have a person dedicated to just supplying records. That is correct. She is an expert in her field to interpret the state laws. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys very much. <laughs>